In this episode, I have an NAD Model 214. The complaint on this unit is it's got a noise emanating from the left channel, a constant static sound, which initially sounded like it may have been a bad transistor, but as I got into it and started testing, it looks like the problem is somewhere else. Let's look. So there's our problem. We have noise on the left channel. No sound or no input present. So this is an NAD 214 power amp. I had the companion uh, preamp in with that circuit glue all over it and causing all kinds of strange problems. This time we got a problem on this one with the left channel noisy. So let's uh, dig into this one and see what the problem with this one is. So this NAD was a Chinese made one. We know the problem is going to be on this board, as this is the left channel, this is the right channel. So we'll first of all just tap around and see if it's going to kick in and out. I think we got a bad transistor probably on here somewhere. Ah! Okay. Well, you saw what happened there. As soon as I touched that, the noise went away. So we may, it may be, maybe right down in here. Maybe a transistor down here is noisy. But when I tapped right on the board there, that's where the audio input goes in, right? The audio input comes in from the back here. Okay, here's our audio inputs. One going off to this channel, one going off to this channel here. This is our preamp down here, and here's our drivers and our output transistors. So somewhere in this area here. So the first thing, now of course it's quiet. We'll take the board out and just inspect and see whether there's any uh, any of that circuit glue or any connections that look like they could be suspect on this. So We'll just remove the screws on the bottom here that hold the heat sink in place and then that whole actually we can remove this access panel down here it might even make it easier that I don't have to remove the board okay first I'm going to give this thing a good look over and close inspection make sure that there's no obvious uh, bad solder connections here as you can see, I've removed the board so I can get a close uh, look at this. I'm just going to go over this thing and make sure that there's no uh, cold solder connection. So we follow the uh, signal path from our input. We end up here. At, this is the plug. Our signal path goes in through the preamp transistors, driver transistors, then, and then feeds the outputs. Anyway, the type of noise that we're experiencing here is typically going to be a transistor somewhere in this area here that's gotten noisy. So now it's just a matter of trying to track down which transistor it is and we'll be doing that by applying heat from the iron and uh, cold spray to cool it down and see whether we can recreate the fault. I haven't been able to spot any uh, obvious bad or cold solder connections looking at it so it has to be a component. So now we'll try the heat cooling trick to see whether we can figure out which one's causing the problem. Now obviously the, the transistors that were closest to uh, where I was when I first tapped on the board, you saw where I tapped it right in this area here is when the noise disappeared. So Q307 and 303 are both the, the closest ones which would put them, that would be these transistors right here. Right. The other ones here on the other path are over more over this direction. So this is the, the where I'm going to start just because that's where I was um, when I just give this a tap right here. That's where I was when it cleared the problem. So we'll start there with some heat first. So let's turn on the power. Of course, it's not going to be noisy now. So hopefully, when I get the iron in close here, it'll start doing it.
Now normally when you have a heat sensitive component like a transistor or an IC, just bringing the iron in the vicinity of it will cause it to act up like happened on that Yamaha which I was able to troubleshoot that bad preamp transistor in the phono circuit by just bringing the iron close to the transistor. In this case I'm heating these ones up and nothing's doing anything so it may not be a transistor after all. Now, anytime you're bringing an iron anywhere into the, into the top side of the board, you got to be really careful you don't even get near these type of capacitors with your hot iron because it'll melt the plastic and short the, if the they're a foil capacitor. So you got to make sure you're very sure that you don't get in there with anything too warm. You can also try the heat gun too, just warm the whole board up and see if the noise will come back. So we'll just apply some heat. See whether one of the parts has gone thermal. After a couple of minutes of heating with the heat gun I still have no noise whatsoever. So it, this is further uh, indicating that the problem is probably not a component and it probably is a connection problem very likely in that connector because if you remember where I tapped it in fact I just touched the, the actual uh, interconnect cable is what made the noise go away so the, the problem very well could be a bad connection in that connector or a connection on the board I've got the board fairly warm there and it hasn't uh It hasn't done it. So the next thing we'll try is we'll try cooling some of the components down with circuit cooler. I have a feeling that my dust off is pretty much empty. Yep. I'm gonna have to get some more. I use dust off upside down as cooler. But as you can see, it's just blowing air, so I'm going to have to get another can of this before I can continue. I guess we have a bad plug. Could have been a plug too, right? Because I just tapped this and it went away. It might have been connections on this plug that were bad. Oh, jeez, what was that? Whoa! I didn't blow my speaker there. I think we have a bad plug on this thing. We might have a bad plug. Like the internal connection between the plug and the pins. I was just wiggling that around and you heard that blast a couple times there. I wonder if I've got any sound on this thing. Let's just see plug it in here. I got one channel plugged in here. I wonder whether it's a plug that's at fault. Let's take a close look at those pins and see whether there's any oxidation on them. Certainly worth a closer look at on the bottom of the board, that's for sure. So that plug is right here. I think what I'll do on this uh, board is I'm going to go over it. I'm going to really give it a good inspection. I'm going to reflow any connection that looks even the slightest bit suspect. I'm going to reflow it and uh, then we'll test this thing and uh, see whether it makes any difference I mean a few of these connections looking at them from this angle on the monitor a few of them looks like they could be like this one right here
I'm just going to go over a few of these, reflow a few of these connections here that kind of look maybe just a tad iffy. We'll go over a few of those and then I'm just going to test the hell out of this thing and see whether it will. I'll leave it running and see if it will act up. This one may have to run for several hours. Being an intermittent problem, it's it's anytime you get an intermittent, it's, you know, it's tough to know whether you got it right. That's the problem. Something that does something all the time, it's relatively straightforward. But when you get intermittent problems, you know you uh, you you make it your best educated guess and hope that uh, that that best guess is what it is. So over the course of looking at this board very closely and resoldering a couple of the connections that look bad, I've basically done most of the connections on the driver transistors and the preamp transistors. And now we're going to test this unit and uh, see whether we've uh, resolved the issue. Again, being an intermittent problem, it's going to be tough, so I'm going to have to let this thing run for hours, if not days, to verify that I've got the problem, but I'm pretty confident that we're probably in the right area here, and it's going to be a connection problem. Still possible that it is a component that's failed, but just the way that it went, the way that it was acting up and the way that it stopped as soon as I touched that cable is a a better indication that it probably was a connector problem and it was uh, not getting a good connection between the input uh, connector at the back and the board itself. Okay, I finished soldering up the unit now, and now the test. We're going to test run this thing for several hours. I don't need to actually have sound playing through it. I just wanted to make sure that I have sound. I'm only testing the left channel there, but if I plug the other channel in, we'll have sound on both speakers. Which we do. I don't need to leave the sound running, as I say. Um, this is a noise problem, so if the problem's going to act up, if it's going to do it again, it's going to get noisy. So. I've resoldered all the connections on the board. Uh, it still could be a bad transistor that was causing the problem because those type of noises are typically uh, a transistor that's gone bad. But the fact that it happened as soon as I touched this plug, it went away. It could also have been a poor connection between the main board and the amplifier board or any of these connections in here. And we saw a few of them when I was soldering the board there. A few of them looked like they weren't done very well. So. I'm going to let it run now, I'm going to leave this thing run for hours, and uh, we'll continue this video once I'm confident that I've got the problem solved. Well here we are, it's several hours later, it's been running now for about five hours. I just keep, I've got this uh, two hour DAT tape and I'm just, it's, it's playing now for the third time. So uh, it's been running all afternoon, no noise whatsoever. I'm pretty confident that uh, the problem with this unit was either a connection problem on this board or perhaps this plug here. Uh, I don't think we have a transistor problem. I am going to continue to monitor this thing here and uh, see whether it's going to act up. Uh, this unit was in with the preamp before and it didn't act up and it took a few months before it kicked, before it started to act up. Uh, when it was, the whole system was brought to me by the customer that owns it and they brought me the preamp. You saw the preamp repaired on it. That's the one that had the circuit glue on the board and it was had leakage and it had to take it all apart to clean the controls. I think it was the 1600, I think was the model of it. Um, 
I hooked up this power amp at the time and there was no noise so I didn't do anything I didn't do a video on it because there was nothing to do it was fine it was working fine I sent it out and a few months later I get the call that it's noisy and sure enough well you heard the noise it sounded like a bad transistor but as soon as I tapped on the board it went away um, I have to think it could be a transistor that's bad but if it is it's certainly not doing it now but I am going to continue to let this thing run uh, publish the video now uh, if there's any updates I'll let you guys know but it's been running all afternoon but again um, the last time it worked for a few months before it acted up so keep my fingers crossed that the problem is resolved that it was in this plug here or in that vicinity we'll catch you in the next one bye for now that's it it's over go away the video is done go bye